Right back at it. What we talking about? Look how big my hands is at five nines. Palm that shit like Mike, man. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Uh, uh, step back, look. Where was that from? Where was that from? This is the same shit gonna happen in Jamal. We knew that we was different. We knew that we was us. He gotta stop calling Jamal Crawford out. That is blasphemy, yo. Make some noise for Wallo. Oh my. Are you just posting hey, clips? He, he just he just asking he just asking crazy questions. <laughs> Can I really hoop? Is a pig be <laughs> pork? Hmm? But yeah, you had to think about that. That's crazy. You had to think about that. You had to think about that. Yeah. You had to think about that. I'ma just get straight to it, y'all. Please stand up, get ready. We got Zuri over here, and we got Wallo and Gilly! How was it getting started off? Like, I know you had read an article called Gilly at 4 a.m. in the morning. Like, we gotta start this podcast, Million Dollars a Worth for Game, which you had already been referring to as a term, but it wasn't yet a podcast. So how did that, that call go? Talk to us about that call, and then what was, the approach after that. You know, you, you talk about the podcast on monetization, but the first time I really got monetization was from Gil. I had, uh, when, I, when I got out of the joint, I was doing these, I used to do, when I was in prison, I used to watch, uh, 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 what's my man's name? Uh, Anthony Bourdain. Anthony Bourdain, my man. So I used to watch him, and I said, in, I said in the inner cities, in the ghetto, we don't have no directory. Like, we could be 15 blocks from a place and don't know it exists. So I used to go to people, businesses, and I used to do these commercials for people for free on, on the gram. So I'd do them, and people put them up, and they'd give me food, whatever. I wasn't even thinking about. I was doing it for food. So, no, not, not just that. But it was whatever. I'd give you a commercial for a platter. No, no, no. No, no, no. So I'm straight out the joint. So one day, Gil called me. He like, yo, man, somebody, somebody got some money for you, right? And I'm like. I had to start managing this shit. So I'm he did 48 restaurants for food. He lied. He Give me lied. a slice of that pizza. He lied. Come to Ludwini's. He got the best pizza in the city. No, he don't. So, so. Fetchy, you, you know what So once he, he hit me up, he was like, dude, got some money for you. I said, man, I'll be doing this shit up, man. This got some money for you. And then after that, I was monetizing my, my IG post. I went from 300, 750, 2,000, 3,000. I just kept running it up off of IG one minute post. Um, but. You know, and that's how a lot of uh, I, I, was, I made a, sh a nice amount of money from IG. So one morning I'm in Baltimore. I'm reading an article because usually I be on, up at night reading a lot of stuff. So when I read this article, I said, "Oh, I got, I got to wait." So I called him early in the morning, woke him up. Uh, I said, "Yo, get up, read this article, man." I sent it to him. He hit me back. You know, usually he'd go back to sleep with some shit. He called me back, he's like, yo, is, you, is this shit? I said, that shit real. They gave out 400 million in the first quarter in 2019. So, April, that day, I called my man Nick Rich. I said, yo, Nick, I need a logo. He done the logo. He had the logo back to me like, I want some change. I hit the attorney up. I said, listen, I need an LLC. Boom, I need a trademark. Wham, we went right in. And then like, mm, April 17th, I was in Utah. We dropped our first episode. We went like on all categories. We went like number two or some shit. Comedy we was like number two in like seven hours. So I said, oh, we got something. Because at the time, it was nobody out like me and Gil. When you thought a podcast, you thought of Joe, or you thought of Drake Champs, or Comeback Jack, or Joe Rogan, you ain't think of two dudes from the inner city right, popping the shit. Yeah. So when we came, we like, oh, we got them. So we did that. Then one day we get a call from, uh, what's my man name? Called it Spotify. Um, Rich motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we get we we get uh, like the head of Spotify at the time. He called us, and uh, I don't know how he get his numbers. This is how you know when you when you pop it, you ain't got to tell nobody you pop it. They're gonna find you. They get your fucking number, yeah. and they gonna call you, and it's going and it's not going. It's gonna be some other shit. So he calls. I said, hold up. I called Gil. I'm like, yo, this nigga on the phone, man. It's blase, blase. I'm gonna think his name, cause this dude used to run like Walt Disney, and, and he used to ran a bunch of shit. This dude pop. So I say, cuz man, I'm like, yo, he like that. So all he keeps saying, he said, uh, what do y'all want? 
So I said, what the fuck do you? I said, what do you want? I said, he said, he said, y'all can't be on YouTube. Uh, we want to, I said, hold up, what are we doing? We be doing licensing deal? Like, what are we doing? So Gil just, Gil come out when it's time to check a motherfucker. Right. We ain't doing that shit. Listen, so so that's what happened. Shit sound goofy. But but first, we fucked this up. He was like, what do you want? He got nervous. Cut I said, cuz, I can't, I can't do this shit. But I'm supposed to tell him. <laughs> this shit, no, it was crazy. So, so we back and forth with Spotify. And then all of a sudden, bars still come in. But at the time, we just killing them. We just doing our episodes. We just doing it. And ain't nobody seeing it. And at the time, we was just me and Gil. But all the athletes, all the rappers in, it's like, yo, man, fuck with y'all, man. Y'all niggas crazy. Right. Right, so. Um, but the whole time we was doing it, we was making money. Yo, we was making money. We had independent advertisers. Because I would go. Shout out to uh, Springfield Hyundai. Springfield Hyundai boys. And back door and Bobby. Yes, you on point. So. <laughs> Backdoor Bobby gave that goddamn beef bacon up. Yeah. Yeah, so so, so, so when we started, like rocket, yeah. I started doing fake I, I started doing advertisements at the beginning of the podcast to show an example. So now while Gil chilling in the spot, smoking and stew, smoking weed, I'm running around to all type of people like, listen, I got, you know, you wanna do some ass? They're like, yeah. So when I come back with a funeral home, he say, funeral home. I say, listen, motherfuckers got to die. I was die. confused. I said, I said cuz. Fuck, we gonna advertise a funeral. Thanks. So I said, I, I got this, cuz. I said, I got this. Don't you wanna look good when you're dying. You wanna go out. For... I said, yeah, this so, is a cold mother. So, no, this is crazy. So I give it to Aisha over in Camden. She give us, we was getting like, I'm talking about like, you gotta think about us, we, we sell minutes. So a month is four minutes. You only get one minute on the podcast. We only drop one. We only drop fifty-two times a year, once a once a week. So we selling minutes. So I'm like, listen, man, four minutes. You, I mean, give me twenty grand. I give you four minutes. It's gonna be popping. This is gonna wow. be the best four minutes you ever got. Yeah. So they like, all right, I try. She got two minutes and said, don't do no more commercials. I'm getting too many. bodies. I got too many bodies. That was only two episodes. Keep the money though, but I got too many bodies. Too many Stop people was shit. coming to a joint, right? Nice. Yeah. But but the whole point is. <laughs> The whole point is, when we go to Springfield, we like, listen, man. I tell Gil, I said, listen, put all your jewelry on, man. We got to go up in his office and go, you know, because I got to sit out. I'm, no I'm like, damn, man, if I get these motherfuckers for 52 minutes, because that's what I'm thinking about is minutes. I'm only thinking about minutes. Four, you got four, you got eight, you got right. months. And so we went in, they was like, so it was always, when you go into companies, a lot of times, you got to tap into the young person in the company to understand culture now. A lot of times, the older people, they don't understand yeah, it. it yeah. So the son was, he loved this, right? He said, Dad, I'm telling you, these guys is, Gil coming in, he loved Gil. Ah! He know Gil, I'm like, yeah, yeah, fake ass rapper. Watch the rapper. So I'm like, yeah, so I'm like, back. I said, nigga, you work on Fuck y'all laughing like that, for So I said, back. I'm like, yeah. Well, some of y'all look. <laughs> so, so, so they like, all right. So after the joint, it's the third. Gil will always say, so he told us, I said, damn, we need such and such, such and such. He said, all right, sure. He called me, come, nigga, come outside. I go, and say, nigga, chill, nigga. They, they, they gave it up too much. We doubling back. Let's. Let me work now. He went in there. You know what I mean? Because I'm out to join, man. I'm trying to get eight down. Trying, yeah. yeah. He's talking about, right? right? To it. So we went in there, got some more money. So it was, just, it was just about, like, we knew that we was different. We knew that we was us. We knew that we wasn't, it wasn't no... It wasn't nothing for us to mimic in the podcast space. We knew Million Dollars Worth of Game was some shit that wasn't out here, so we didn't. Right. We wasn't mimicking, the we ain't look like nobody. Yeah. And we knew that it wasn't nothing real and authentic out there. No, that connected real. to the young cats and connected to the ghetto and connected to everyday people. So that's why Million Dollars Worth of Game came. But he started that shit in like 2012 when I was in a joint, just saying it on the gram. The so he built the brand up. He dropped the tape that was called Million Dollars Worth of Game, and. You know, I've saying that a long time, man. I got footage of me and Meek Mill in the studio in 2009. And I said, give you niggas a million dollars worth of game, but you niggas don't listen. That was in 2009, man. Right, and look where y'all at now. That's what's up. We got another question right here. Y'all can make some noise for that. Go ahead. Hey, what's up, fellas? Uh, Lamar, Brooklyn Fashion. Um, how do you think, I love the uh, Young Thug interview, by the way, YSL. Um, how do you think that was received post-interview? I mean, post-interview now was like, damn, everything Wallow said came came to light. We had, uh, 
You know we, what I mean? We talked to Doug some months ago. You know, and, and the great thing about it is that his energy was, we was on there laughing. Yeah. And fucking like, you know. But he was like, you know, he said, man, he, you said a lot, though. He just was like, you know, you said a lot. But it was so much that was said after that because it was like, we was, but that was an all nighter in the studio outside of the interview. Um, and I remember after the interview, we was talking, he showed us a, a, a million dollar wire from uh, Rule It Out for one show. And I said, me and Gil said, nigga, listen, nigga, you don't disrespect. He said, I know, OG, I know. We was just laughing. It was like, you know, um, a lot of times our whole goal is, like Gil, he always said, we, a lot of, we don't really give a fuck about you if you're a certain age, and I'm not saying it in the wrong way. We really cater to the young boys because a lot of times the young boys ain't got no dads or no uncles. A lot of them fell out, you know, in penitentiary, drugs. So we try to get them game because ain't nobody gonna tell them. And when we in these spaces, it's like everybody afraid to say something to the young boy. They just wanna be cool. They don't know how to say, listen, young boy, you want some dumb shit. Same thing with Pooh Shiesty, same thing with King Vaughn. Same thing, you know, it's the conversations outside of Same the Same thing with Cheese. Same thing with Cheese, you gotta understand. That King Bourne interview, it was so crazy because if you go back and look in the King Bourne interview, it was King Vaughn, PNB Rock, and his son, Cheese, was all in that interview. If you pull back and look. So it's like, it's so like, it'd be crazy. You know, it's like, so you, you know, you got a heart for it because from us growing up in the streets, but from me being in the penitentiary, and me seeing a young boy coming there at 18, with 50 to 100 years life, and they don't understand what's going on, it's like, damn, Neff, the fuck was you doing? I know your mom. I remember mean, when you was down the way, and they like, and they mom sending them like, yo, go up there, wallow. So it's like, you know, you try to tell them that, but it's so hard, because it's a battle, because yeah, I might say it, McGill might say it, but you gotta go up against everybody else that's co-signing your dumb shit every day. And, it, and, it, and it's so fucked up for us because it's like, I be telling a lot of these youngers, oh, you niggas, you, you wait till y'all get become millionaires and start doing some street shit? Think about that. Because the streets now is not about making money. The streets now is about violence. Because they took the shooter and made him bigger than the, the money getter. So they, 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 they glamorize it so much, it's fucked up until where's those Chicago, and I talked to Dirk and them, I said, Chicago, Fuck the whole country up because they influenced it so much. And, and, and the influence got so deep, it got even to the rap. I told some young kids, me and Gil was talking to some young boys that rap in Philly. We was like, what Philly nigga you know that made it off a of drill rap? Nobody. Because it's not your culture. You pop from cities when you pop in the culture. And when you giving up the culture, the lingo, the drop. You niggas, you know, y'all incorporating Chicago culture, you never been there. Everybody's back door. Everybody got the link. So it's Think like, about it. You, me and this nigga, this nigga's 44 years old. And everywhere we go, niggas say, y'all nut ass niggas. <laughs> Think about that. We some old niggas that got niggas all across the country except in Philly slang. But the young niggas, they don't even accept their own slang. They go out here and use another city slang. Think about that. It's crazy. So, so you gotta understand. But back to the interview, he right down here in North Philly. We had a, we had a studio on uh, Marshall and Gerard. He down there eating the cheese steaks, laughing like, "Yo, man, give me some." We just bobbing, and it just next week he was gone. So it's it's real crazy, man, to see these young boys to go through the situation. And you try to tell them, but it's like they only listen when it's over. What's going on, y'all? I'm David from Black and Mobile on the food delivery service. Um, yeah. Dave from where? Black and Mobile. Black and Mobile? Yeah, Black and Mobile. So we own the first black owned food. Must be popping. That's the first time I heard of that joint. But they like, yeah! Well, we only deliver for black owned restaurants, too. So oh, okay. That's what's up. Question for uh, Wallow, you know, because you, 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 motivate, you motivate me a lot. Um, but what drives you? Like, what really drives you from when you were in prison for 20 years to coming out, because you've made it to the top, you made it where a lot of people don't make it. What continues to just drive you? Because it clearly isn't money, you have that. People look at you like, you don't have any challenges. So what are some of your challenges that you may go through when you get to the top, and what just drives you every day? And same question for you. First first of all, hold up, give me that mic. 
How, how, how's your father doing? You remember we had that conversation? He, he died from heroin. Damn. 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 I had a conversation with him. You remember we had a conversation about your dad? He said, man, oh, damn. He was hard on his dad because your dad went to the penitentiary and he spent most of your life in jail. So I, I begged him. <coughs> I begged him. I said, listen, man, I need you to do me a favor, give your dad a chance because I said, your dad was young when he went to jail. He was a kid, so he didn't really know. I said, give him a chance, man. I've been in jail. I know, I know how this go. He was like, yo, you remember? He's like, I never looked at it like that. I said, your dad was fucking a teenager when he had you. So to hear that just fucked me up, man. I'm sorry to hear that, man, for you and your brother, man. I'm sorry to, damn. Oh, man. <laughs> but uh, motivate me, man. And, and the, the, the struggles that I have, and Gil will tell you, <laughs> When you get money, you lose a lot of people. Because I stopped being a human being and I started being money to people. And instead of you calling me, you know, the calls that used to be the call to laugh or laugh about some shit on Instagram or just cuz or bro, now it's like everything is a, a Apple Pay or a Cash App request. Everybody got a story and a call. It's just like everything is just bullshit, bro. That's the most painful shit ever. You know, you can have the things, you can live the life, but it get real lonely at the motherfucking top. Because now the people that you thought love you, they don't. And if you can't take advantage of them, if they can't take advantage of you, you become fake. You become Hollywood. Soon as the motherfucker, you know, the, the, the 10,000 yeses, the one no, you ain't shit. So it just be, it just be crazy. And like Gil always tell me, Gil be like, fuck him, cuz. You know, but it, but but as a human, it hurt because it'd be people that you love. You'd be like, damn. It don't hurt me. No, you know what I mean? It, it'd be like, it'd be, it'd be crazy because it'd be just like, it'd be like, that's that's the only struggle. But you know the battle? But what motivate me every day is because I ain't, I'm just warming up. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like what we doing and the plans we got, um, like we always think of the more, we always think of the new ways to innovate, bring new uh, stuff to the entertainment game, technology. You know, we got Pure Fuel, we got the one and only, my little cousin, his daughter in New York, LA, ready to fuck shit up. Uh, we got a lot of things that y'all didn't even see yet. So I think, I think like Gil know what keeps me moving is being create, being creative, and I just just doing new shit because it's like. I think I got a lot of stuff written down and to be able to bring something off of, off of the paper that you written down, coming from the ghetto, being a convicted felon. Um, they told me that I, I will be back in jail. The COs told me that. I used to laugh, because I used to talk shit. You know, sometimes you had a racist CO, you shooting the shit. I want, uh, uh, I wonder can the motherfucker see me now? You know what I'm saying? Um, and I say that to say, Everything is possible. That's why I keep going. And for the young people to see me to say, Wallow ain't no rapper, Wallow ain't no athlete, but Wallow came out of jail and made something out of his life. To see that they could do that too. You know what I mean? I'm the cultural advisor of YouTube, one of the biggest companies in the world. Talk heavy. I'm, I'm, I'm the chief marketing officer of Reform. I'm the, Talk heavy. I'm the co owner. A pair of few. I'm the co-owner million dollars worth of game. You say you gotta look at all this shit. Right. Co-owner million dollars worth of game entertainment. For entertainment and then million dollars worth of game entertainment. So we got so much shit and it's just like that's the drive to, to see to let a young cat see that. Yeah, you go to the streets. You you know you go to the streets. Wallow went to the streets, but he made it out. But what's the chance of you making out? Cause they ain't killing motherfuckers like they was. They wasn't doing this back in the day. So, young blood, they gonna put you down, or you gonna go to the penitentiary. Now, if it's somebody you looking up to the streets, 
or they drug dealer or whatever, look to me because I get more money than them. Way more, way more, way more. So it's like, you know what I mean? What do you, like, you could be wild. And I ain't saying me personally, but you could do something legitimate with your life and fucking win and, and enjoy all the successes that they not enjoying in the street culture. You see what I'm saying? Because I ain't never seen nobody that ain't get killed to go to jail yet. You know? So to be able to motivate the young brothers, that's important to me. And y'all see it in me, because I'm the dude that just walked out of the penitentiary seven years ago Sunday, and it's like, come on, man. Don't tell me what you can't do. You see what I'm saying? So that's, that's the motivation. Yes, sir. Make some noise for Wallo, Gilly, and I'm honoring the Gilly Godfrey. I want to say something to y'all. Uh, it was tough for me to be here today. My, uh, my son, birthday is February 1st. He was murdered, my two-year-old. And I'm um, coming here today. I wasn't supposed to be here, but I wanted to, I wanted to hear y'all. On the bag and say nothing is gangster. That's what I believe. Coming from the streets and transforming my life to where I'm at today. Um, uh, uh, I got triggered a couple times in that room and had to stand still for a second. Um, a lot of goofy shit happening around people, so I'm gonna say I, I, I appreciate y'all. Truly, I appreciate y'all. You don't have no idea how y'all have been poured into me and helped me to be who I am. And, a, and the funny part about the journey is um, it's only fucking funny until it's fu to it work. It's, 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 it's funny until it work. Everybody laughed, running, in the rain, nut ass nigga, but when it worked, Oh, you're a genius. You've been a genius. You've been a genius. I met you decades ago. You know, my mom and my sister. You, y'all special, man. I can't even tell you. I'm thankful for this moment. And maybe it wasn't supposed to be me speaking out there. Maybe it was supposed to be this. Because I was a little pissed that I didn't get to ask a fucking question. But I'm going I'm to I'm I'm bury that for a, a personal conversation. But in them boxes, it's affirmation cards. A poster that say Hillman's Gangster, Bugs Me Hugs, and I gave y'all two hoodies. I, I might have got the size wrong, but um, I appreciate y'all. I'm sorry for your loss. It's, 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 it's cool. I, I, no, it's I'm, still, cool. I'm, I'm still processing that shit. Yeah. I'm sorry for your loss. You hear me? Your shit one day at a time, man. You hear me, brother? Yeah. One day at a time. I'm going to give you my number. We won't connect. Anytime you need to holler, talk, anything. It's one day at a time. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Trust me, I feel your pain. Y'all know what's like when I lost my son. I'ma say this. The fact that you that I seen um, the word come out of me. You said a word to me that triggered me, right? Trust. I don't trust a lot of niggas. Respectfully. But being here with you and we having this authentic moment, I live for stuff like this. I don't even know how to fucking exist without my little mans. And I gotta show up and love and... I, just, rough. I, I appreciate y'all though. It's one day at a time, man. I'm, 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 Take my look. I'm processing it. I appreciate you. Text me, sir. I'm gonna text you right yeah. now. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. We go down. Yeah. yeah, right. Where, where, where we go? Yeah. It's going down. The next one's ready. ready to go. It's going down. The next I might gotta hop into the crowd. The next joint after I knock in. Has been more aggressive than his predecessor yeah. in both okay. All these shit. You got all heat. All these <laughs> shit brand new. They all were sent to us. Like, them silver joints is hard and some shit. What, the sketchers? No, I'm silver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, man. Tough too, Good. What you doing? What's last thing, y'all? Any of these hoodies, anything. Seriously. Hoodies yeah, take anything. Oh, you said hoodies too? Yes. They came from white shit out. Yeah, I'm about to grab. Yes. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, yeah, man. You hurt too much. Yeah, you hurt too much. Ten and a half. You hurt too much. Ten and a half. That's right, bro. Do they fit? Yeah. If you fuck with these guys, money wants to win. Do a run, do a lap. Oh, shit. You good? Oh, yeah. Yup. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, I was wearing cleats to take out the tray. You feel me? Yeah, it's a music video. Come on. You done bleed that. You done stacked up about five pairs of them. I've had to wear cleats to my cousin way, I mean, I was late. I'm in there click clacking it. He thought I had a stiletto, you feel me? But I'm good now. I'm great there, huh? you know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, mm, yep. Yeah, right. Yo, these to the crib. These to the crib. You know what I'm saying? These to the crib. I'm going to do it again tomorrow because I'm wearing 10 and a half too. So I'm going to do it again tomorrow. I'm going to do is bring all my sneaks from the crib. Wham! Here y'all go. He said, wham! All my shit be brand new. Because I wear the same fucking sneaks, same day. Whatever's by the door. Heard, I mean, my. Summer, summer, summer time. Yes, I like. Yeah, that nigga put it. Yes, I like. Motherfuckers, yeah, yeah. Need them cotton candies, you see? Cotton candies, talk to me. These joints crazy. Yeah, they make sure, but make sure, but man, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Look, man, you look like. So that's a paper, too. Yeah, they need you to wear these. No. Paper. Yes, sir. We got a million dollars worth of game flip flops in. Nice, dude. That's great. Like on some, right, so I, cool. I, I told you I coach wrestling. I got steaks this weekend. So at the gym, they do. They start to do MMA and shit like that. At the gym, I got parents all the time. Yo, you want to teach my son boxing? So that's putting money in my pockets in a way like, all right, fifty, sixty dollars a session. Come do boxing just because I knock the ball out like, like so. Different ways, you feel me? I'm making money. Shit. Shit. shit, I ain't gonna hold you. Shorty just came to the crib a couple weeks ago. He was telling him about it. Cause he was there, he was on corner and shit. So he was telling him about it. I'm trying to chill. He's like, yo, throw it on, cuz throw it on. I'm like, I right, threw it on. They was like, that was you. I hit him with this. Boom! I'm like, yeah, I'll try to tell y'all. Cause I'll be like, yo, I really fight. They be like, nah, there's no way you're too goofy. You be laughing. Like, all right. Shit get real. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you the day before I told you, I was like, he's doing all that joking and laughing and shit, bro. Tomorrow is gonna be a whole different. Yeah, like I'm really gonna try to knock this. Like, you feel me? Like, he ain't never knocked nobody out in his life before. Like, I did that before, you feel me? Like, I know I can knock a motherfucker out. The boy thought he could, nah. Different. Like, yeah, now nah, the next boy, he's the same treatment. The day before, I'm gonna let him do his little talking. We gotta sell it. We can talk our shit, we'll pop your shit. The day of, I'm taking your heart from you every time. There's no laughing, joking. I ain't trying to shake your hand, bro. I'm about to beat you up. That was so. Yeah, he was the one that knocked the nigga out and jumped on the roofs. Yeah, wear it up, wear it up. Juice in the building. Y'all know what I bring every time. I told y'all last time, I'm gonna tell y'all this time. You step in the ring, you going the fuck down. It's either me or you. Either you going down or I'm going down. I'm 10 toes up every time, so figure it out. Ah, get to your side. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that liver. That liver, y'all see him trying to box me up. No, see, look at him. He, he think he gonna catch another body. Ooh, he, gonna, he think he gonna catch another body like he did on the <laughs> Gilly Wild <laughs> KO party, man. Better team. I gotta see the purpose though, cause you know, in person, I'm a jack. Cause highlights. I'm a, I'm a jack. Jack. Anybody can look good in their highlights. You feel what I'm saying? I gotta see like the. Is it streaky? Is it? Shoot. You gonna make yeah, three better shots? Better team player for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. See, I'm a jack. I wrestled in high school. I just got hustled in basketball court and shit. I, yeah. I'm a he hustle. one of them people that's going to fast as shit. Nah, I ain't going to fuck you. I'm going to fuck you. I'm going to fuck you. He's using his fire and shit. You're different, bro. You know how I'm talking about shooting. Were you talking about shooting? I seen that. That's what I was talking about. I seen it. I seen it. Cousin here, old cotton, too. He said, NBA 3. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can shoot that shit. But look, on some G shit, he gotta stop calling Jamal Crawford out. That is blasphemy, yo. He gotta stop that shit. shit. Silky, man. You gotta stop calling Molly out, yo. Jamal, Jamal Crawford? Philly, bro. 
We ain't bagging down from nobody. Jamal Crawford is going to get. Bro, the nigga's six. Six already. He's going whatever. He's. Bro, his shit is on a real string. It's Jamal. Jamal Crawford. He gonna only take two dares. Molly. That's that's bad. Two dribbles? No, he gonna only take two Who's dribbles. Who's this? They made the rules. They fucked him up with that. Yeah. Bro, when I check the ball up, bam, I'm right here. Okay. Let's go. Let's, let's go. Let's go. How you go? Hold on. Hold on. He gonna put the ball right here. And then move your head. Oh, that boy right there. Move your head. Okay. Move, bro. Step back. I'm right here. I'm right here. Every time you only got two dribbles. I'm trying to tell you. Two dribbles. I'm trying to tell you. One of them go ahead to the right or to the left. Oh, yeah. man. I'm different. You as man, you gonna oh, fucking make Damian Gillard. Yeah, you got him. This chick got YouTube. Somebody put on a Jamal Crawford highlight. I don't care about highlights. highlights. First niggas in the room. Remember, my name is Damian Gillard. Highlights is highlights, bro. Shay uh, Gill just said I said. Remember that. You gonna go. Two dribbles. You keep forgetting. Two dribbles, bro. What? Yo, that's a that's a regular NBA drill. I can do whatever drill. I want. Like the oh, you can do whatever you want. You only got two drills. Like He's gonna bro. kill you. Yeah, yeah, it's it's what? Yeah. It's not. It's, it's like boxing. <laughs> if somebody get knocked out every round, yes or no? I'm gonna play no. defense. Alright. Because yeah, yeah, I got to. You seeing highlights, bro? No, no, no. Two, two. I understand basketball enough. Like I know the two dribble drill. I know the whole everything. But that's something that to get to the NBA, you do that all the time. Like in practice, three dribbles. Y'all go to the top of the key. They say three dribbles. Sometimes you get one. Three dribbles. Two dribbles, Jamal Carver's gonna be able to get space, bro. No, he's to not. To pull a jump he's shot. Not. He gonna be able no, to drive with two dribbles. Not. Not Rip two through. Dribbles. Boom, boom. No, he's not. <laughs> Rip through. Not. Am I saying some crazy shit? Y'all niggas. Oh, this crazy shit. He's not. He's not. I'm saying some football shit. Not with two dribbles. He's not. Y'all got it set up? We gonna set it up. We're going to see it. You gotta kill if it happens. I'm gonna play his son first. I'm gonna cook little JJ. And he got all the dribbles he, he wants. JJ Jr. I'm gonna cook triple J. <laughs> he got all the dribbles triple he wants. J. He had me do JJ Jr. All right, sit on the floor. Then I'm gonna go right at his pop. I don't know, bro. Jamal Crawford. Two dribbles, baby. Two dribbles. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga's six. If Jamal, could, if, Jamal <laughs> Crawford, if Jamal Crawford could do what he wanted, I would be like, all right. This shit gonna get nasty out here. Two dribbles. Yo, you don't think he can create space with two dribbles? No. I see. Not enough space. He gonna make some baskets. He not gonna walk to the top of the carry time. He's like walking right to the little, right to the elbow, right to no, the top. No, I'm giving him the ball. Dribbles, I'm bro. giving him the and ball at seven. NBA three point range. <laughs> yeah, not at the foul line. Fuck you talking about. NBA three point range. On the wing, he gonna walk somebody down with two dribbles. He gonna walk over to the wing. Right. Right. I don't got the moves. I'm not too on Crawford. Right. I'm right here. He fucking around. Right. Boom. Come around that way. I'm right here. Yeah, but he's not right there. Yo, tell me he's not right there. All he sees you not right there. Shane Battier. I ain't gotta be at the shop. I'm at the house. Shane Yo, y'all hear the bullshit. He's Shane Battier. I'm at the Oz. I'm not at the shop. I'm at the Oz. I get to the Oz. Shane Battier. Battier. Yes. Yeah, no. So now he, you know. You he know, he didn't say Bruce Bowen, Tony no, Allen, uh, Kawhi Leonard, Shane Battier. Because he put the hand in front of your and face. And Kobe was yeah. killing that nigga when he was trying to face guarding him. Listen. Well, just make sure, uh, just yeah. Kobe, yeah. Make you just said Kobe, bro. Huh? That's Kobe. I'm just saying, but face guarding you tell me whoever. It, 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 and Kobe could take as many dribbles as he wanted. Kobe was 6'7". Six, wow. seven. Six, this seven, is bro. two dribbles. I'm told you I, think Jamal Crawford. Jamal Crawford had the what tallest is 6'5". The tallest. Nigga, how tall are you? 5'9". What are we talking what is, about? With a 6'4 yeah, wingspan. Yo, fuck out of here. You don't see no 6'4". Go ahead, you hit me from right there and shit. 6'4". 6'4". <laughs> oh. You can't grab the rim, girl. I got a 6'4". You can't grab the rim. You think you I'm right? Him? Like like that. Yeah, don't no stretch and you got a ring. Can he grab a rim with no stretch? I believe so, yeah. Like yeah. no stretch. If he jump up his right leg, yeah. 
Bro, I'm an athlete. Nah, I believe that. I've seen that. I'm asking if can you look at your reach room? compared to my reach. My reach is way longer than yours. No, it's not. Nah, extend it as far as you can because I'm going to extend mine yeah, as, as yeah. far as you can. Get the fuck back away from Hold me. Hold on, wait. Uh, get the fuck up. <laughs> get, get closer to that. No. Get the, I stay I, straight, though. I, you I, turn I, to I, the go ahead, side. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm standing straight. I'm looking straight. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. I told you. Yeah. A 5'10". Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I can back up. My shit's still on him. What? I can back up, too. Now you go. Uh, uh. I can back up. Y'all turn your body down. Right. Fuck that. Put the gloves on now. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. We got gloves upstairs. We get the gloves.